Hey everybody, this is Pokolos, and welcome back to Ariel the Little Mermaid. Today, I will be covering Atlantis. This level is quite strange because, like most of the levels, it is pretty large. However, as you can see, there are only seven polyps. All of these polyps are located within the first fourth of this level. About three-fourths of it is just open for exploration if you wish to do so. This unique level design choice is actually very interesting for such a rather simplistic game, and honestly, it makes it one of my favorite levels. The short length also kind of contributes to that, but I also just love the concept in general. A giant crumbling undersea utopia gone wrong? That just sounds really freaking cool to me. You know I'm saying all this like I forgot this is a Disney video game about mermaids. Yeah, yeah okay, it's, it's a Disney video game, it's not that great, but hey, I really do like the idea. Anyways, up here is a rather unique enemy. Kind of looks like a cupid statue. It is actually one of the most dangerous enemies in the entire game. Just for this. Yeah. One of its arrows, if it comes into contact with you, could drain your health like a bulimic leech. It is absolutely ridiculous. And probably the strangest part about this enemy is that its arrows don't always deal consistent damage. Sometimes it nicks your health and sometimes it completely drains it. It's a very random enemy, and I recommend just swimming away as far as you can if you see it. Another statue-based enemy in the level are these bowling guys. I'm not sure what they're supposed to represent in mythology. All I know is that their bowling balls tend to gravitate towards Triton. I'm fairly certain that Triton is not massive enough to have his own gravitational pull. Maybe he has a magnet in his pants, or fin... Regardless, these bowling balls, while individually don't do that much damage, as an entire barrage, they do take quite a toll, and they group up very quickly. Now at this particular point where I'm at, I'd like to show off first of all, you can't pick up things in the air, which is a pretty stupid decision on the game maker's part, but a lot more of an important thing to talk about is that to the right of me, all optional. On easy mode, you do not have to travel past this point. There's just two treasure chests here, and there's a few keys over there. Other than that, nothing. In the bottom right corner, there is the shop. I'm, that's probably the only useful thing I'm not showing off. It's literally barren. No enemies, maybe like one or two statues, but other than that, nothing over there. That's the only reason I'm not showing it off. Now that I got that out of the way, that vase right there could actually be pushed by Flounder. If he pushes it off of the higher ledge that it's on, it will break, and you'll get some treasure. I don't show it off because it's not that great of a thing, but whatever. Since we're playing on easy, we don't need to travel to the very right of the map. We'll just need to pick up this polyp, and now we're on our way to the boss. I wonder what the boss is going to be this time. So far we have one incredibly crazy boss, a lava head, and we have one normal boss, which was a shark head. Is that... Oh, oh god, that was easy. Uh-oh. Uh what, what the hell? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. A giant stone Medusa head. What is it with this game and boss heads? I mean, come on, lava demon head, shark head, and now Medusa's... I, I don't even know. This is four heads at once. I can barely tolerate this. Anyways, the main goal is to shoot the snake heads. They spit lava because everything's lava in this game. And apparently even the ceiling spits lava at you because the entire geography of this level is just out to get you. But it doesn't really take that many shots. Just kill the snakes and the statue dies as well. And that's it! Sorry about this level being so short compared to the rest of them, but I'll make up for it next time. Stay tuned for the last level. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.